Somewhere, hidden amongst thorny brambles, is a little kingdom of elves and fairies. Everyone who lives here is very, very small. I'm Ben Elf. <coughs> and I'm Princess Holly. <laughs> Come on, let's play. Wait for us. <laughs> Ben and Holly's Little Kingdom. Today's adventure starts at the Royal Golf Course. The Royal Golf Course. It is simple, really. To play golf, you just hit the ball into the hole. There. Is that it? It's a bit boring. It would be more fun if we had little hills to hit the ball up and down. Knocking your ball up hills and around corners is called crazy golf. That sounds great. Please, Daddy, can we play crazy golf? We are playing normal golf. Where did these hills come from? Daddy must have magicked them. Thanks, Daddy. I didn't magic these hills. Then who did? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. Wise old elf. Good morning, King Thistle. Who made these hills on my golf course? <laughs> A mole, your majesty. Well, get rid of it. We've been trying to chase it away all morning, Your Majesty. <laughs> Don't you know how to get rid of moles, wise old elf? Uh, no. Then who does? Nanny Plum. She can talk to it. She speaks all animal languages. Of course. Nanny! Yes, Your Majesty? Ah, Nanny Plum. You talk to animals, don't you? Yes, Your Majesty. Then can you tell this mole to leave my golf course? Uh, no, Your Majesty. What? I can't speak mole. It's one of the more difficult animal languages, along with aardvark. But can't you use magic to get rid of the mole? There is one magical method to get rid of moles, but unfortunately, it uses a gnome. What's that? A gnome, Your Majesty, is a sort of elf with a big tummy. What? Gnomes are nothing like elves. They eat too much, talk too much, and never do any work. I don't care what you use, just get rid of that mole. OK, I'll fetch us a gnome. Where am I? Hello, Mr Gnome. I've called you here to get rid of some moles. It will be my pleasure. I like trees, they're not like peas, custard creams or goo. I'll sing my song and strum along with a fold de do de do Well, that was easy, wasn't it? Thank you, Gnome. How much do I owe you? Oh, I'm not finished yet, Your Majesty. If I go now, the mole will come back. What? Then you must stay. As long as it takes. Of course. Getting rid of moles uses a lot of energy. And my tummy is very empty. Nanny Plum, get this gnome some food. Very well, Your Majesty. A sack of cheese sandwiches with a bucket of tea. I say, you are hungry. I will also need some workers. Absolutely. Wise old elf, I command you to do whatever the gnome says. As you wish. Thank you, Your Majesty. Not at all. Just let me know when you're finished so I can play my golf. Of course, Your Royalness. <clears throat> I am the wise old elf. I look after this royal golf course, and my knowledge of it is second to none. Can you use a shovel? Uh, yes. Good. The first job is to flatten these hills. My name's Ben. And I'm Princess Holly. 
but you can call me Holly. That's nice. You can call me Mr. Gnome. I need a deck chair and a fishing rod. Why do you need a fishing rod? On a golf course. So I can pretend to fish. Pretend to fish? Moles don't like it when I pretend to fish. Now quick, before the mole comes back. Abracadabra cheese sandwiches. One bucket of tea. <laughs> Nanny Plum! Nanny Plum! Mr Nime needs a deck chair and a fishing rod quickly. So he can pretend to fish. Oh dear. I thought this might happen. We have flattened all the hills. So, um, goodbye. Thank you, wise old elf. I will also be needing a windmill. What? A working windmill is a very difficult thing to build. Oh, it mustn't actually work. No, just pretend, but with sails that go round. Oh, all right. Sandwiches, tea, deck chair and fishing rod. Most kind. What's that noise? Wise old elf, what are you doing? We're building a pretend windmill for the gnome. A pretend windmill? Yes. It mustn't actually work. It's just silly. But it looks fun. Can Holly and I help you? Oh, yes, please. Now we can fix the sails. Finished! Oh! Ah! Is it dinner time already? Not really. Could you get me a bucket of custard and a big jar of pickles, please? Oh, and some plastic flowers. You're going to eat plastic flowers? No, that would be silly. They go with the windmill. Ah, good work, wise old elf. Thank you. Goodbye. Finally, I will need a little bridge. What? A plastic well and a little picket fence. So he wants a bucket of custard and a big jar of pickles? Yes. Hmm. I knew it. I should never have used a gnome. What's wrong with gnomes? Oh, they make everyone else work while they just eat and sleep. Grumbling again, Nanny. I say, are we going on a picnic? No, Daddy. This is food for Mr Nine. What are we going to eat for dinner, Nanny? There's no food left, Your Majesty. The gnome has eaten it all. Nanny, remember that Mr Nine needs plastic flowers too. Plastic flowers? They go with the windmill. Windmill? I'd better see what this gnome is up to. <laughs> <coughs> oh, Ah, thank you, wise old elf. I couldn't have done a better job myself. Oh, look, a pretty bridge. I can see you've certainly been working hard, Gnome. Yes, your kingliness. So, when will it be safe for you to leave? Oh, well, I don't think it ever will be, your royalness. What? I might have to stay here. Forever. But what about my golf? I won't get in your way. But you are in my way. Ooh, custard and pickles. <laughs> I can't play golf with all this stuff around. I know. We can play crazy golf. Yes, crazy golf. 
This crazy golf is much better than the other kind. Yes. <laughs> Daddy, do you want us to teach you how to play crazy golf? It's fun. Oh, OK. What do I do? Just hit the ball through the little windmill. And into the hole. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun! <laughs> Somewhere, hidden amongst thorny brambles, is a little kingdom of elves and fairies. Everyone who lives here is very, very small. I'm Ben Elf. And I'm Princess Holly. <laughs> Come on, let's play. Wait for us. <laughs> ben and Holly's Little Kingdom. Today's adventure starts at the Great Elf Tree. Morning, noon and night. Seven o'clock. Time to get up. Ben, breakfast ready. Thanks, Dad. Right, Ben, let's get your hair brushed. Let's get your elf hat on. Don't forget your new watch. There. Now you're ready for school. But, Mum, elf school doesn't start for ages. Can I go and see Holly? I want to show her my new watch. OK. But make sure you get to school on time. Of course I will. Elves are never late. And I'm an elf. <laughs> Phew, Mr Elf. Mornings are such hard work. I should say so. <sighs> That's the cockerel crow, Princess Holly. Time for fairies to get up. Uh, is it morning already? <sighs> Breakfast's ready, Holly. Uh, thank you, Nanny Plum. Let's get your hair brushed, Holly. <sighs> And here's your crown. All done. Ooh. Mornings are such hard work. Ooh. Hello, Nanny Plum. What is it, Ben? I haven't got time to be answering the door to elves. Can Holly come out to play? I'm afraid Princess Holly is too busy to... Hi, Ben. Hi, Holly. I've got a new watch. Wow. Is it a real watch? Yes, you can hear it ticking. Oh, yes. Can you tell the time, Ben? Not yet, but we're going to learn how to tell the time at school today. Yes, well, I'm sure you don't want to be late. I'm an elf. Elves are never late. <coughs> Bye, Holly. Bye, Ben. I wish I had a watch. Whatever for, Princess Holly? If I had a watch, I could tell the time. We fairies don't need watches. We have different ways of telling the time. Like what, Nanny? We have dandelion clocks. Here's a good one. How can a dandelion tell the time? We count how many puffs it takes to blow away all the seeds. Like this. <gasps> one. <gasps> Two, three. It took three puffs. That means three o'clock. <laughs> I want to go. One. That means one o'clock. Wow. So is it really one o'clock? 
<laughs> Not really. It's just a game. But Ben's learning to tell the time properly. Can I go to his lesson? Oh, all right. But I'm sure it won't be much fun. When the big hand and the little hand are pointing straight up, it is 12 o'clock. Hello, wise old elf. Ah, good day, Nanny Plum. Can we join you? Yes, as long as you are quiet. Righty-o. Hmm, now, uh, who can tell me how we know a watch is working? We can hear it ticking. Oh, yes, Holly. Very good. You see, we fairies know all about time. But you fairies don't have watches or clocks. We have our own ways of telling the time. Hmm, I'm sure you do. Now, how do we know when to wake up in the morning? The alarm clock rings. Correct. I wake up when the cock call cries. Cock a doodle -doo, doo! Yes, I see. And how do we know when it's time to go to sleep? When the clock says it's bedtime. Yes. Correct again. I go to sleep when the owl hoots. Twitter woo! <laughs> <laughs> but without clocks, how do you know what time it is? We have dandelion clocks. Look. <gasps> One. <laughs> Can I have a go? <gasps> Two. And me. <gasps> three. That means three o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, stop, stop. That's all fairy nonsense. <laughs> but it's fun. Fun has nothing to do with telling the time. I don't suppose you fairies can tell me what time it is now? It's noon. Ah, yes, Holly. Well done. Wow. How did you know that? Because the sun is high up in the sky. And I know it's lunchtime because my tummy is rumbling. <laughs> How silly. Excuse me. My tummy is never wrong. Oh, it is lunchtime. School is finished for today. Hooray! Holly, would you like to come over to play this afternoon? Yes. OK. See you later, alligator. In a while, crocodile. <laughs> hmm. It's almost six o'clock. Where's Holly? Hi, Ben. You're late. Fairies are always late. And I'm a fairy. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up. I've got something to show you. What's that noise? You'll see. <laughs> Are we there yet? <gasps> Nearly. This way. Hello, Princess Holly. Hello, wise old elf. This is the great elf clock. Wow. The most accurate clock of all. What does accurate mean? It means it always tells the right time. Quite so, Ben. I set it every night by the distant bells. They usually ring about now. Da da dum, do da di da, da da la la, da dum di da. Oh, my tummy's rumbling. That means it's time for dinner. Dinner time! Dinner time! The bells! The bells! Now I need to adjust the clock. But that's just Nanny Plum. What do you mean? Nanny rings the bell every night when it's dinner time. 
<clears throat> and how does Nanny Plum know it's dinner time? Her tummy rumbles. What? You mean I've been setting the great elf clock to a fairy's tummy rumble? Yes. <laughs> Her tummy does seem to be amazingly accurate. It is dinner time. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Ben. See you tomorrow, Holly. And the beautiful princess lived happily ever after. The end. Time to sleep, Holly. But, Daddy, the owl hasn't hooted yet. There's the owl now. And the fierce dragon ate the witch. And everyone lived happily ever after. The end. Time to sleep, Ben. But, Mum, the clock hasn't chimed yet. Ah, oh, it's chiming now. Good night, Holly. Good night, Ben. Somewhere, hidden amongst thorny brambles, is a little kingdom of elves and fairies. Everyone who lives here is very, very small. I'm Ben Elf. <coughs> and I'm Princess Holly. <laughs> Come on, let's play. Wait for us. <laughs> Ben and Holly's Little Kingdom. Today's adventure starts at Gaston's Cave. Gaston's Visit. Gaston! Are you coming out to play? <coughs> oh, Gaston sneezing. Mummy, Daddy, Gaston the Ladybird's caught a cold. I'm not surprised. His cave is leaking. Look! Hmm. There's a hole here. Maybe if we move that pebble over it. Good day. Good day, wise old elf. Uh, what seems to be the problem? Gaston's cave is leaking. Hmm. Leaks can be tricky. What you need is a proper builder to fix it. But where can we find a builder? I'm a builder. Really? Oh, yes. Elves are very good at building. And I'm an elf. <laughs> In that case, I command you to fix Gaston's cave. Yes, Your Majesty. A wise decision. Hmm, interesting. There seems to be water dripping in. Yes, and there's a hole up here. <laughs> that hole won't be the cause of the leak. How do you know? With respect, some things are best left to proper builders. So how long will it take to fix the leak? Oh, it will take a very, very long time. And while the building work is going on, the ladybird won't be able to live here. But Gaston's got a cold. Where can he stay? Well, perhaps Gaston could stay with us. Yippee! Are you sure you know what you're doing, darling? Ho oh, ho! Of course I know what I'm doing. I'm king. <laughs> <laughs> Time. Oh, I'm afraid insects are not allowed inside the castle. It's all right, Nanny Plum. Daddy's invited Gaston to stay with us. Oh, very well then. Make yourself at home, Gaston. <laughs> Gaston, Gaston, ladybird. I hope he's going to learn to wipe his feet. Gaston isn't well, Nanny. <laughs> and he hasn't got anywhere to stay. I'm still not sure it's a good idea for him to stay with us. Don't worry, darling. Gaston will be no trouble at all. So, where is he going to sit? 
He can sit on this little chair. <coughs> Nanny Plum, you can speak, Ladybird. <coughs> What's he saying? Gaston says this chair is too little. <gasps> no, that's the Queen's chair. <laughs> Don't fuss, Nanny Plum. The Queen doesn't mind, do you, darling? <coughs> Gaston says, this chair is too hard. <clears throat> Actually, Gaston, that's my chair. <coughs> Gaston says, this chair is just right. Goodness, it's like having Goldilocks to stay. <laughs> <laughs> um, never mind, Daddy. You can sit on this little chair. Yummy. Thanks, Nanny. Yes, this food is delicious. I suppose I'd better magic up some special ladybird food. By a ladybird's growl, food smelly and foul. Look, smelly welly. <laughs> Gaston loves smelly food. Uh, why isn't he eating it then? Gaston says it's too cold. Uh, hello, Gaston. Daddy, I think he wants to try your food. Hmm. Have a little taste if you like, Gaston. Gaston says it's just right. It's such fun having Gaston visit us. Can he stay with us forever and ever, Daddy? Uh, maybe not forever, but he can stay until his house is mended. Oh, goody! <laughs> and the weather in the Little Kingdom today will be bright and sunny everywhere. Look, King Thistle! Gaston's getting better! <laughs> Splendid! And the Pixie Pound has seen a drop uh, uh, to the um, dollar. Gaston says... That this TV programme is a bit boring. How about this one? And this programme's too noisy. Hmm. Oh, this programme is just right. <laughs> Look, Daddy, Gaston's not sneezing anymore. So, uh, now Gaston's better, maybe he can go home. But, Daddy, Gaston can't go home until his home is mended. He might catch another cold and then he'll be sad. Yes, we wouldn't want Gaston to be sad. <coughs> Gaston says you are the nicest king in the whole world. Thank you, Gaston. Uh, maybe I'll go and see how the elves are getting on at your cave. Hello, wise old elf. How much longer is this going to take? As we builders say, there's no point in rushing things. Well, maybe a little rushing wouldn't do any harm. I'm afraid we have a lot of problems to deal with, Your Majesty. Uh, it's probably a silly idea, but have you tried moving that pebble over the hole? <laughs> You're right. That is a silly idea. Maybe it's still worth a try? With respect, Your Majesty, we each have our jobs to do. You're the king, and I'm the builder. Of course. <sighs> it's been a long day. I think I'll go to bed early. Uh, Your Majesty, that might be a problem. What do you mean? Well... It's to do with Gaston. Yes? Nanny, magic to this basket for Gaston to sleep in. Well done, Nanny. But the basket was too draughty. Hmm. Then he tried my bed, but that was too soft. Oh, dear. I don't like the sound of this. Don't worry, Daddy. Gaston's found a bed that he says is just right. <laughs> Oh, but that's my bed. What's he saying now? Gaston says he is very tired and would like to go to sleep now. Oh. 
Good night, Gaston. Sleep tight. So, where are we going to sleep? That was the most uncomfortable night ever. Oh, how long is Gaston going to stay with us? I did say he could stay here until his cave was mended. And how long will that take? I don't know. Let's go and see how those elves are getting on. Hello, have you fixed Gaston's cave yet? Gaston really misses his home, wise old elf. Good news. We've replaced the rotting wood, plastered the ceiling... And fixed the leak? No, not yet. But I'm sure in time we'll sort it out. Have you just tried moving this pebble? <sighs> Hooray! King Thistle's mended Gaston's cave. Well done, Daddy. Amazing work, Your Majesty. Have you ever thought of becoming a builder yourself? Uh, actually, no. I think I'll just stick to being king. Look, Gaston. Your cave's ready. You can go home now. <laughs> Gaston says thank you and bye-bye. Bye-bye, Gaston. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Gaston. It was fun having you to stay. We'll be so sad to see you go. Gaston says he doesn't want you to be sad, so he'll come and stay with you for a bit longer. It's OK. I won't be that sad. Gaston insists, Your Majesty. Very well. Lovely. Thank you.